my name is Artur Skoblenski. I'm a software developer in Smart Recruiters. We are not a recruiting company. I won't try to recruit you after that presentation. We are creating software for the recruiters. So I won't, like I said, I won't try to recruit, recruit you. And today I will say a few words about the uh, voice assistants. What are promising of this industry? What are current state of it? And I will show you a few potential usages for it. But before I will do that, it's my introduction. I enter the industry in the time of the gold rush. Mobile phones showed up and developers found a lot of golden nuggets in them, in us mobile application. Whoever did a hit mobile application get a lot of money, a lot of pride from it. Unfortunately, that, time, that times are probably over. A lot of uh, the biggest, most popular applications are done by few biggest companies. It's kind of hard to create the application as a single developer, as a homemade something in cool that people will install. Maybe a part of games, but games hard to be done by a single person. And I got a question, who installed a new mobile application, not game, in the recent month on this place? As you see, few people, but in the past, it will be one application every week for everybody in this room. So probably still there is attraction, but not that big and in the past. So developers started to look for a new gold rush new place where they can gain something from creating new, cool, new, great application. And one of that industry is probably VR, augmented reality. It, there's a lot of fuss about it in the industry. A lot of people are talking about it. Uh, still, it didn't get that much traction. We have a few devices for a year on the market. There wasn't any killer app that everybody wanted VR for. So probably there's still a chance, especially after last pre Facebook uh, conference when they represented smart uh, lenses, smart filters for Messenger, for example, but didn't get that bit traction as everybody thought it will. Also, smart watches. They were promised to be a next big thing in the industry. And right now, after a few years, we didn't get one big application that everybody wants smartwatch for. Additionally, there's rather declining of producers of smartwatches. Uh, one after one after another big uh, company resign from producing them. So probably smartwatches wasn't that big thing. And we have voice assistants. In the last year, a lot was talking about the voice assistants. Every big company have one right now. And I would like to get insight of that industry today. But before I will do that, Alexa, tell audience something about yourself. Okie dokie. Welcome in Warsaw on Code Europe. I am Alexa and I'm sure we will show you a few interesting Thank things you. today together with Artur. I'm a bit shy, so please, don't be too loud during presentation. Okay, I don't like babbling about myself, so please Artur, can you introduce me properly? Of course, my dear. Okay, I am among geeks there. So, probably nearly everybody from of you have watched at least one Marvel Universe movie. I can assume that. So, Alexa is... Li don't, I'm not talking to you right now. Alexa, it's like Jervis. I couldn't find any songs that match your request. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the input. Alexa is like Jervis from the Iron Man of the Tony Stark, but without armor. But I hope Amazon is working on one, of one right now, because they are working of, uh, among many different things. And Alexa uh, is a device that you control just by your voice, without any input, physical, without any additional uh, cooperation between you and device, you are just talking, Alexa just doing. And I know she is not the first one that was introduced to the market, Siri was. She was a big thing when iPhone 4 was announced. 
but there was one problem with Siri, because she was constrained to the mobile phone. So she was one more mobile application. The usages, uh, ca case of usages was quite similar to what you do with the mobile application. It was constrained to your phone, so it was just extension of it, not something new. Amazon chose different strategy. Amazon decided that Echo Alexa won't be enclosed in your mobile phone. Alexa will be sold with a uh, eco devices, smart speakers that will be put on your living room in a highly different context, not in your pocket, near your television. And that strategy really flourished. I will show you a number in the moment. But before I will do that, probably a lot of you are thinking I'm trying to sell you something. But I know I'm not only among geeks there. I'm also among engineers, and engineers like numbers. So, few numbers right now. Uh, during last holiday season, nine that much eco devices was sold in comparison to the previous year. So, quite a big amount. Additionally, Alexa companion app application that you can use to set Wi-Fi of Alexa, set uh, enable skills, things like that took fourth place during that period, the holiday period, on Apple App Store. So people not only g received the Alexa devices, they also started to use them, start to configure them. And that's something. But those two numbers probably aren't meaning that much. That one is interesting. During this year, uh, CAS, uh, Technology First, uh, 24 external partners presented their own devices um, powered by Alexa technology. So a lot of different companies, not only Amazon, already put effort into that ecosystem. We have vacuum cleaners powered by Alexa. We have fridges powered by Alexa, by LG. We have, we will have cars powered by Alexa, by phone. BMV, uh, BMW and uh, Volkswagen. Right now, you can put your Alexa as your smart car device using, for example, LG te Logitech technology. Huawei is exchanging uh, Alexa uh, with the Google, uh, Google Now for Alexa in their new mobile phones. So Alexa is will use the same use cases as Siri. And since I was presenting in the Krakow a month ago, Amazon showed Alexa uh, Echo uh, look that is also your own private selfie camera powered by Alexa and also Echo Show that is Alexa with the screen that for example you can do teleconferences on. So additionally there is promising that in future, in the near future Alexa will uh, support notification. So a lot in a short period of time, a lot of different companies, a lot of different industries already heavily invested in the Alexa. So there is a chance it won't disappear at the moment. It's not just the one company. It's the whole industry who is working on it. But I have showed you potential pro promise of potential uh, usages. Let's see what Alexa can do right now. Okay, wait a moment. You'll be in the moment. Okay. The poster child of the whole initiative is controlling your smart home. If I would be at my home, I probably would show you Alexa, turn off the light, turn on the light, because it's really cool. People are lazy bees, and when you are laying in your bed, you don't want to turn off the light. You can ask Alexa for this. And that's definitely something that works great on the demo. But what is my favorite use case of Alexa is playing the music without controlling any devices. So, let's try it. Alexa, tell audience what is my favorite song. I don't like what you are listening. You are listening so boring songs. I have something far better. One, two, three. Alexa, stop please. Okay, I got recorded by my own device. That's not cool. And probably, in truth, that's all I use Alexa for right now 
at home as a consumer. In the United States, it's kind of different uh, piece of cake because you have already services for the Uber, Domino's Pizza, or Starbucks and others that you can use that uh, voice control uh, ordering their services. Unfortunately, they are leg locked. They work only in the United States. You have also applications that are not region locked, like, for example, news applications. They work quite fine at Poland, but unfortunately, it's kind of unnatural to use English language when you are at home and you are in Poland, especially if you have people around. It looks, like I said, a bit unnatural. So, there is a question. Alexa, tell audience when you will learn Polish. Arrivederci. Oh, no, it was no, a great no, time no, no. for me. Alexa, it stop. You don't need to be that shy. Alexa, tell audience when you will... Alexa, tell audience when you will learn Polish. Uh-oh. The truth is, I don't know myself yet. I'm still learning new languages, but for example, since few months I'm talking German. My creators use few tricks to make my learning process much smoother, so it should be possible. And, spoiler alert, in not that distant future, Artur, please, can you tell audience what tricks I'm talking about? Yes, of course, but I want to remind you, Google solution it gets tricky, much smarter and smarter, so next presentation can be about Google Assistant. Remember that. Okay, so right now, trick she was talking about is a great buzzword on the last year, deep learning. Uh, probably um, a lot of you have heard about that. And maybe not everybody tried, but there was a lot of tools, a lot of techniques presented last year. So this is just more fancy, I would name for the kind of machine learning. But it's important because Amazon is using that techniques to empower how Alexa is learning. And due to their technical documentation and presentation, just one of the layers of that process is strictly connected to the specific languages. So layers that are responsible for understanding of context, creating messages for the users, doing actions, they are language agnostic. So Alexa was able already be translated to the German language and to English UK, because Amazon consider English US and English UK different languages. I think this is quite clever. And there is a chance that there will be also solution for Poland. Because Alexa has Polish mother. Do you know that face? Do you recognize it? Yeah, exactly, Ivona. So I'm not that old, because sometimes when I present in the face, everybody's just looking on me, who is she? This is Ivona. And Ivona was one of the most popular voices of the Polish internet just a few years ago. She was everywhere on YouTube. She was everywhere on the private MP3 files, for example, reading audiobooks. She's a face of the voice synthesizing company called also Ivona. And that company was bought in January 2013 by Amazon. And that company, Polish company, is responsible for Alexa voices in the every language in on the world. For example, if you are going to just language services, you can still ch check uh, classic Polish voices to try. So that layer is ready. We need for Amazon to have a business uh, initiative to start it in the Poland. Okay, so we are talking about the Alexa, but Alexa is not the only one voice assistant on the market. We have Siri, we have already thought about it. We have Google Assistant, who, who is empowered by Google week by week. On the last Google I.O., there was a lot talking about the Google Assistant. I, it has already few capabilities that Alexa don't have. For example, recognize different voices. For Alexa right now, it's just one voice. One, uh, they don't recognize different user. Voice assistant can do that of Google. There is Cortana from the Microsoft. It's, it's now, uh, unfortunately, it's not working in Poland good way. There is Bixby 
from the Samsung that will be empowering all new Samsung mobile phones. So, there is a question. Alexa, tell audience when we, why we should choose you. Hmm, I don't know that. Yeah, I was, that was my fault. Alexa, tell audience why we should choose you. Oh dear, is it some rhetorical question? Ouch, how can you even ask? Have you ever tried to teach Siri something? Good luck. She may seem clever, but if you want something more from her than what she already know, you will have hard time. Me, on the other side, I'm eager to learn from you and become more important part of your life. Aren't you already know that? I'm your co-presenter. Fancy that. She got a point. As a user, probably I would choose Google Solution. Because I'm I really quite invested in the Google ecosystem. I really loved the Chromecast solution, the Chromecast devices that work really great with great uh, Google Assistant. And like I said, probably that would be my choice if I would be consumer. But I'm not here as a consumer. I'm here as a developer. And like a developer, I like to hack. And Alexa, for a time period, was the best device to hack something on her. She is really open, she is empowered by Amazon, and Amazon knows that there is really important to make life of developers easier and easier. So they provided the best solution to create their own skills. It's changing because, uh, like I said, after like Google I.O., there is a lot of improvement to how uh, Google Assistant is working with external developers, but still, I think the ecosystem of Amazon is the best to really quickly hack something. So, let's hack. Right now, we'll be doing a simple Twitter application, simple Twitter skill, because that's how application for Alexa are called, that will be reading tweets for the Code Europe tag on the beginning. <laughs> so, we should start somewhere. And let's ask our dear co-presenter. Alexa, tell audience, where should we start? Open Sesame. We will start with Amazon Lambda. That's definitely way to go. How many of you know Amazon Lambda? Please raise hands. Now, now. Okay, I see few. For the rest of you, we will need to make some proper introduction. Artur, can you carry on? It's good to trust your audience that there will be somebody. <laughs> so, okay, Amazon Lambda is once again responsible for big buzzword. This buzzword is serverless. There was a lot of fuss about serverless application. And you can consider Lambda application, serverless application, as function as a service. You are just deploying the bit of code to the cloud. You are not thinking about servers. You are not thinking about any environment. You are just pushing your code to the cloud, presenting endpoints you can ask that code for, and you get request response communication without any additional infrastructure. That's a simple solution. And this is the best way to start working with Alexa. There are possible different ways. But this one is default one, definitely most supported in the easiest. So we'll start with that. And to create new Lambda function, you need to go to Amazon Web Services Console. This is place when you create new Amazon, you are uh, connecting to the Amazon services. You need to choose your Lambda from Compute section. Uh, probably, it will be developing with, Lam uh, with Alexa, it will be in your most recently used. When you go there, you need to go to create new Lambda function. I hope it's visible because I don't like those screens, but I hope this they are visible. For every Lambda, you need to define trigger. And this trigger can be API Gateway or other Amazon services. In our case, we'll choose Alexa Skills Kit. There is also Alexa Smart Home. This uh, section is uh, for the creators of the devices. It's also an interesting topic. We'll not cover into the presentation. We'll just uh, focus on the skills. Okay. 
and we need to configure our function. As you see, we can write our function just in the browser, because Lambda is created for the simple function. Amazon presented you the way that you can start in the fastest way possible. We can choose for from few different languages, Node, JS, Java, and JVM languages, so you can go with the different languages too, Python or C Sharp. In our case, we'll go with the Node.js because it's quite, uh, quite uh, easy to grasp languages for working with Lambda. It has not that much boilerplate. And when we do our function on the Amazon Lambda, the important thing is this ID. Because Amazon La Alexa is not connected exactly to your Amazon Web Services. It's not one of the Amazon Web Services. To trigger your function, you need to write down this ID and pass it to a given Lambda skill, to a given Alexa skill. And now she will know that she needs to add that skill. Okay, but we are developers. We probably don't want to write our code in the browser. So we'll use handy tooling. The one of them is Node Lambda. It's just simple utility to deploy your code to Lambda from the console, easy way. Also, we will use Twitter library just to be able to don't write code for the Twitter communication. We'll have already that. We just ask for specific queries. So let's write our simple basic code. Yep, we are here. We'll go to the ID right now. It's, uh, is it visible right now? Okay, perfect. I hope so. We'll go to the console. Our, okay, I will go there. Yeah, this is the simplest possible Lambda function. We need to export our handler and define function that will have, we will have three parameters. The first one is event, that's uh, input from the user. We need, then we have context, that is context of your environment, uh, on which device you are, wor on which uh, infrastructure you are working, if you are w need that information, how much memory you have, how much processor you have, also your session information, that will be also important later. And callback. Callback is used in the sh simplest possible applications to present something to the end user. We will not use it later, but I will show you right now how it works. We'll use our node Lambda without any deploying. Hold on. And no, it cannot local for undefined. Aha, sorry. N we will do run. It's my fault. Wait a moment. I made simple utilities to work with that because we'll be deploying on production. Like you see, hello. Code Europe is just our callback, return to the console. The simplest possible Lambda function. Let's go with something more concrete. We will go okay, to the our Twitter one. Sure, we'll go there. Yeah, this is our Twitter code. As you see, I already predefined some keys because mm, the creating application on the Twitter is not focused on the presentation, and that created a simple function, query Twitter. We are passing query string, and we are asking Twitter to get our query and just tweet in the English language. Because it's important, you need to say, Alexa, in which language you will pass the input because, for example, if you they will be in Polish, Alexa will try to eat the, read them in the English accent, and that won't be that nice. So we just we are filtering just tweets in English, and let's run this function from our handler. Like you see, we are requesting uh, requiring our Twitter client. We have our handler. It's more complex right now. We are asking it for tweets, and on the callback, we are returning their tweets to the end user. We have uh, our status 
from the first tweet from the list and username because we now want to know which user used that tweet. That's a moment for you. If you want to have your tweet presented at this presentation, probably there is a chance because we are working in the real Twitter. Please don't write anything nasty. If you write it, they will be connected to your username, so probably you don't want. Let's try it. Let's see what will happen when we'll run it. Watch tweet we'll choose. Okay. So we have our tweet. Uh, read more about MVVM architecture with the data binding library in this article, Code Europe from Sampon. So, like we see, we already have connection to the Twitter. Let's add Alexa to it. Okay, right in the presentation. Hello, Alexa. We'll be using Alexa Skills Kit that is provided by Amazon in that presentation. We can work with Alexa using just text input because everything that Alexa is getting or responding is just a JSON object. But probably, first, it's not readable there. Second, is the low level detail that is quite complex, not focused on the presentation. Probably, we don't want to see it today anymore. So we'll be using Alexa SDK. What is important to go create something on Alexa, we need to go to Amazon Developers Portal. One more console. Alex, uh, Amazon has quite distributed uh, working over day applications and day services on Amazon Web Services. Unfortunately, they are not in the same place. That is not handy. I will log in. And Right now, there is a place that if you, for example, want to create application that you will pass to Amazon uh, Store for Android, it's there. If you want to create some services that will Amazon use, it's there. If you want to create Alexa skills, it's also there. And get started. We need to choose from the two different kinds of services. The first one are Alexa skills kit. The second one, we'll use it right now. Second one is Alexa voice services. Because, in truth, eco devices are just speakers. Whenever who want can, for example, create Alexa application using Raspberry Pi, just passing sound to the Amazon servers. And for that user, the users who create their own hackish tools, the users who create smart fridges, the users who create vo uh, vacuum cleaners the second ser Alexa voice services are created for. We will create skills for users who already have, already have Alexa, and we'll be doing that using Alexa skill. Okay, let's go to the section Alexa uh, Eurotweet. And this will be back. And there we are defining how our uh, Alexa skills will be working. I will be back from the presentation there. We'll be returning to the console later. And first thing we need to define is skills information. We define in which language we want to create skill. We can uh, define few ones with different invocation name. The invocation name is the word that will be used to trigger our skill. We need to define the name and right now we'll have our simple Alexa skills interface defined. We will not go to the interaction model right now because in this simple application we won't need it. What we will need? We need to define where Alexa should dispatch our request. And when I was talking that we need to write down uh, ID of our Lambda function, we are needing it for there. We need to, we can choose our old HTTPS servers, which is talking in the Alexa JSON format, or we need to, we can create just Lambda function from AWS. We can define uh, for which region we want that function and we just need to pass it. Additionally, if you would want to authorize users some way, we will do account linking there. We are defining out to uh, endpoint that Alexa will use to authorize that. Unfortunately, you cannot authorize Alexa from the voice. You need to do that from the web console. Okay. 
a one-handed trick, I hope we won't need to use it during that presentation, is voice simulator. You can try all, all voice simulator and service simulator. You can use voice simulator to check how your Alexa will sound. It's handy sometimes because uh, you want to for her to be as natural as possible. Amazon is really great. Amazon is working uh, every month. I'm doing every time I'm doing the presentation. Alexa sounds different, and she sounds more human. That's for sure. So they are doing a lot of great work there. But still, sometimes you want to check how your response will sound like. You can do it there. You don't need to write uh, any code for that. What is even more important is service simulator. Service simulator uh, allow you to check your JSON responses and requests. If something is wrong, if your Alexa, for example, don't listen to you, uh, or she's saying that there's error, you have to place it. For sure, you need to check lock, but sometimes it's quite handy to check what she really heard and what she re responded with that uh, help you resolve errors quite quickly. Okay, so right now, let's write simple Alexa skill. It's your time once again. Okay, right now, we will be writing our simple Lambda function. As you see, I'm not passing callback here as a third parameter. I don't need it anymore because I'm requiring Alexa SDK and Alexa is providing callbacks for me right now. As you see, we need to define our handlers and execute them. In the execution, Alexa is listening from the event there that we are passed to the content handler in a given context and executing whenever user passed with the proper response. She knows what to respond with through handlers. We have registered handlers method there, and we are passing an object of different handlers there. The handler that every Alexa skills needs to have is a launch request. In this request, Alex this request will be run whenever Alexa will be open without any specific different intent. I will be telling about it in the moment, about different intent, but for now, we need just that to make it work. The two simple but important uh, event that you can emit for the handlers is tell event that will make Alexa say something, just for you and stop the session, and ask hmm, event. I don't know that one. Oh, I know. Okay, and ask event that will be used for asking the question, waiting for response, and preserve session between invocation. We will write that for that in the moment. Right now, let's check if we'll be able to deploy something to production during live demo. I love it. Please, demo goats, right now, be merciful for me. If there will be any problem, Alexa will tell a joke, probably. <laughs> because we need to kill the time. Okay, it looks like everything is going okay. And now we are on the production, so... <laughs> Let's try how it's working. I, like we said before, our invocation word will be Twitter, as we wrote in our skill. Let's check how it will work. Alexa, open Twitter. Hello, good Europe. It's working. So we just deployed our first simplest Alexa skill to production in the 10 minutes, I would say. No, I Sorry, oh. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm sure you were talking great. Don't, mm, understand, don't misunderstand yourself. The under, don't uh, underestimate yourself. You are great. Okay, let's go to the next step because we wanted to have Twitter skill there. So let's go to the Twitter. <laughs> right now, you see, in our launch request, we are not just emitted something. We are querying Twitter, waiting for the response, 
and tell it what we already have before in our console. I didn't do the error handling, I didn't want it to, um, you know, make code more complex than it's necessary. I can pay, a pay a price for that if something will be wrong. I hope everything will be go okay. Uh, I hope this piece of code is understanding, understandable for everybody. Do anybody have any questions right now? Okay. No, unfortunately no, because Alexa needs to know which war to where to dispatch your request. She is listening everything. She has an array of the possible skills you activated, and she needs to choose. So you cannot do it dynamically. Any questions more? Because we have right good time for that right now, because it's a simple use case of Alexa with external service. Okay, so whenever you are creating your skill, I will return to it. You are defining invocation name. It's there. Probably you are sitting in the first row, so it's hard for you to see. It's there. And now she knows that every request that will start with Twitter or open Twitter, because it needs information that you want to open the launch request for the given tweet, the for given skill should go to that skill. You cannot have two skills with the same name. Uh, Amazon is not allowing two skills with the same name in the shop. You can just uh, probably try to hack it when you are developing, but it will be thrown away. Also, you cannot use uh, one word uh, invocation name. I just use it to make it simple. In this case, if we want to have uh, certification from the Amazon, additionally, you cannot use the words that are already copyrighted, like Twitter, for example. That was the additional trivia. Okay. Uh, how long you want? Probably up. They are saying that it will be should be three, four words uh, at much because uh, if it's longer, it's harder to parse and you have a uh, biggest uh, possibility to error something. So the good word is from two to four words. Uh, can we back to the code or any more questions? Yep. For? Uh, only security, uh, only security concerns. There is around the, the really nice joke from Ifka today that when, anybody, when somebody is coming to home, he is ordering, for example, five tons of the popcorn because Alexa is not checking who is saying the comment. Um, at that pro there's a problem with Alexa, Google already resolved that and re recognized that somebody is uh, given user by voice fingerprinting. Alexa mm. is not, in <coughs> doing, uh, don't, not don't doing that right now, don't say anything, stop. Thank you. I like that. More questions? Okay, so I will carry on. The later we'll have for the questions. Because we know I ask I was for questions because we have quite good timing. So okay, I will try to deep on that code. We'll be asking Twitter in our Alexa handler. And whenever we have a tweet, Alexa will try to read it. Mm. Boom. Okay, we are deploying. Alexa, open Twitter. Will I be read by Alexa during this lecture? Hashtag wishful thinking, hashtag code Europe by Attila Hijisi. Thank you very much. So somebody is actively taking part in the presentation. That really counts something for me. And as you see, Alexa already was able to read from the external service. So we can use any API we want. Like I said, we can, for example, also add uh, out support, so also make authorized calls. But it didn't hurt that, did it sound that good? Because in this example, Alexa was just reading text. Whenever she passed to her, and for the Twitter is not Alexa ready, because you have hashtag there, you have links there, you have uh, special signs there, so probably 
not that good without additional post-processing. We'll do a bit of post-processing now. Okay, Alexa 2, let's go to step 5. Okay, we are extending, extending our function. I created simple function then, clear tag. In this function, we replace old code Europe and code Europe uh, with the underscore to the code Europe wrote by words, because in the we know we can assume that in this case, code we do a tweet, we are looking for the code Europe, there will be hashtag code Europe in the some case. We are removing hashes, we are removing ampersands, and we are removing links. In the more uh, uh, advanced skill, you could, for example, ask for a title of the page that we have link for. I didn't want to add that, you can do it simply. And in our uh, emit, uh, clear to, uh, a part of doing some clearing, we also used one of the great feature from the Alexa, mm, Alexa services, it SSML tags. SSML are for, I will, sh wait, give me access to there, okay. SSML, I will open the page. Tags are for speech synthesized markup language. It's the markup language that was created by W3C consortium. So it's not specifically made for the Alexa. It's made for the web. And one of the biggest contributors for them, that was Ivona. So they brought it with their, their self. This is information, uh, simple tags that inform your, for example, voice synthesizers for blind people, how somebody need to be read how it suit sounds like. And Amazon support a uh, subset of it. They are, okay, because I see we don't have good resolution there. We have audio when we can run some audio clip, like with my record before. We can do some break. We can do specific emphasis. Also, we can do spelling. We can decide should something should be left and ask, uh, say it as a question or as an uh, exclamation, something like that. Uh, Alexa is quite uh, clever with that. Probably we don't used to need to use that often, but if you want to put specific emphasizing, it's a good place to do that. Additionally, you can use something that is called speechconf. Okay, speechconf. Speechconf. Oh. Reference. They are specific words that are already prepared to be read in the specific rate. Yeah, goodbye, like abracadabra, like open sesame in my presentation before. Yep, you can just use them and they will have a bit of human touch. They are prepared to be written in specific accent. They are also a great introduction to make your skills more natural. Okay, so we are going once again to the code. In this code, I use break because we want to have short break before we are reading username of the user. It's a good UX to let user know that this is different part of the invocation. We also make a short break before using speechconf tweet tweet. That will be, you will see that it will be written in a specific way. So okay, let's deploy it to our production environment. Deploying on production during presentation. Not somebody everybody likes. But it's working flawlessly till now. I hope it will stay that way. Okay, wait a moment. Bit. Okay, we are now on production. Let's try it. Alexa, open Twitter. RTMG6 Malche. K.H. Nielsen asking himself a question after his IAT presentation during Code Europe. By Slobodan Stojan Ovik. Tweet, tweet. As you have seen, we didn't have their hashtags, we didn't have their ampersands, we had a short break before the username, and we have our sweet, cute tweet, tweet at the end. So we post-processed our text. Probably in the real application, post-processing would be more complex. Probably it will have more rules. Like I said, make it simple. I, uh, I hope you get a point there. And now, for now, we are just making really simple news briefing skill. 
we just asked Alexa to read something for us. Let's do something more clever. Let's add additional intents. I, I couldn't find do something clever. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't expect much for you. We'll go to the interaction model section. Because, oh, and this will be bad on the screen. I will try to resolve it some. Oh, okay, we'll go. We can define specific schema for our invocation model. Because probably we don't only want launch request. We want something more. And Amazon already, we need to define some intents. Alexa, tell audience what intents are. As you wish. Intents are possible actions you can use to interact with me. We can consider them as functions. Without specific intent, I won't be able to help you with anything. For example, asking me for intent's definition was intent too. In our case, requesting for tweets will be intent. Tweet, tweet. I love that tweet, tweet. Okay, so intents are additional actions Alexa can do. Amazon is already providing mm -hmm. few that are pre-built. Like, for example, Alexa stop indent, that will stop tweet. There are already few words for that, Alexa stop, Alexa cancel, Alexa don't do it, things like that. And then Alexa know that she should stop after that, you don't to uh, write it yourself. Additionally, you can define your own intents. And you can ask Alexa to run specific intent using youth answers. Alexa, Tell you, uh, tell, uh, okay, we'll do it My again. I, I don't under, I know you won't understand me now. Okay, Alexa, tell audience what we can do. You could use your answers. Okay, I've hmm. I, mean. I don't know that. Alexa, tell audience how we can use your answers. Oh dear. Is it some rhetorical no, question? Alexa, Out. stop. Okay, like I said, Google now. Google Left Assistant, I will think about it truly. Alexa, tell audience how can we use utterances. Utterances are commands used to invoke given intents. You should treat them as public API of your skill. It's important to me that you should have many different utterances for single intent. Different people can have different ways to ask for something. You should investigate as many variants as possible to make your application natural. That's crucial for a user experience. Okay, so that's important point because user answers are sentences will ask Alexa to run some, do something, run something specific action inside your skill. And you can do it just like it's with chatbot or with a shell command that you need to write something specifically down. But you shouldn't do that. Probably after you are deploying your skill, you should do some proper user testing and check if given invocation works for your user. How your user your would think they should, uh, what they should ask at the given moment. And uh, we'll have a simple movie intent invocation there because we'll be asking for the twist for specific movie there. And in this invocation, we have something in the brackets. It's the movie title. And this is slot. Alexa, Tell audience about slots. If intents are functions, then utterances are your Good public Alexa. API, then slots should be treated as variables. They are used in utterances to mark part of invocation that can vary between uses. Those slots can be accessed in code of your skills. They can be already predefined by Amazon, for example, members and months, or fully custom and powered by deep learning. Good luck. Okay. So, in this definition of our intent, we put it, we define slots. Our slot is name movie intent. This is the name we are using in our uterans and will be using in our code. And its type is Amazon movie, because we will use pre-calculated, ready Amazon library of movies to make Alexa know w about which physical movie we are talking about. And Right now, we have our invocation model done. Let's go to the code once again. Step six. 
Okay, we'll hide it. Right now, we have something more. We externalize our emit Twitter function. We won't eat it anymore. We know how it works. So I won't, don't want to make it uh, too visible in the code. We remove the clear tag function. Also, and we now have two intents. The first intent is launch request. It's working as before in the code Europe uh, asking for the QTO tweet. We have also our movie intent. Whenever we we'll say Alexa, Alexa, tell Twitter, so our skill to check movie, specific movie, she will look for the tweets for a given movie. And we can access our movie title for our event request I was talking about. It's event request intent slots movie title value. And it works like that. We'll then use it as a query to our Twitter. Let's deploy it and check how it will work. It was probably the hardest part. If there are any questions, we probably have a bit of time. Not that much, but a bit of time. Maybe we'll do it after the presentation, okay? We deployed it to the production right now. And let's open Alexa in the standard way. Alexa, open Twitter. RTG33 cannot. Hey, Code Europe. Wave your hand. Join me for some weather fun with a frame for tomorrow at 16.15 in the room Seattle smile. By Flocky. Like you see, right now it was working fine in a standard way. Let's use it in a different way. Alexa, check it. Uh, okay, once again. Sorry, there is nothing to repeat. My problem. Alexa, tell Twitter to check Star Wars. Alexa, tell Twitter to check Star Wars. R.T. Hamill himself, Star Wars. By Ron Vilches. Leg legacy, we're able to ask for the specific movie. And now, let's go. We have just a bit of time. To the last part, it will be quite complex one. Okay, full flow. From now, we'll be not just telling Alexa to do something. We'll make her ask us for something. We'll do launch request intent, then go to the asking for the specific hash. We also get opportunity to ask for the next Twitter. Okay, we have just five minutes, so I will do that quickly to show you that it works. Let's deploy it. Uh, step seven, it's there. Step seven, this is the last step. I will deploy it already. And we'll have not only in our launch request, we'll be asking for which query we want to check Twitter. Then we will go to the, whenever a uh, user will say with uh, movie in intent, it will which movie they want to check, we'll go to the movie intent. And in that intent, we'll get movie title. We'll preserve it in the session. We can preserve something in the session using this attribute object. It is uh, abstraction over the session uh, context we have seen before. We will preserve the movie title and we'll iterate over tweets. And whenever user will say next after given to given tweet, we'll be reading next tweet for days. There is possibility that our user doing just simple iteration that we'll be reading the same tweet. I hope it won't happen. So let's try this last demo. Alexa, open Twitter. Hello, my dear Code Europe. Tweets about which movie do you want to check? Check Star Wars. Which query to check? Check Star Wars. Hmm. Okay, Alexa, open Twitter. Hello, my dear Code Europe. Tweets about which movie do you want to check? Check Star Wars. RT Newsmat. Today marks 40 years of Star Wars. AP's Newsmat reports. Star Wars, Star Wars 40, Star Wars 40, TH News. A big fan of Star Wars there. By Lancelot Patterson. Do you want next tweet? Next. RT Hamill himself, Star Wars. By May, Clone Star. 
Do you want next tweet? Stop. Okay. Bye bye. And that was my last demo. As you see, we are not telling something. We are asking. We are preserving session between specific invocation, and then we were preserving our movie in the uh, session to not be necessary to read it in the every one invocation from the user. That's not all we will be there to learn about the Alexa. If I have more time, I would say about the DynamoDB support because Alexa has support for the no SQL database from Amazon by default. You can just write it to the session object like you were writing uh, movie in the previous example. Also, there is Lex and Poly because Alexa is uh, more uh, built from the two different elements, Lex this is the artificial intelligence engine, and Poly, that is Volkswagen, is um, we can consider it the next version of Ivona. And I wasn't talking about the Alexa voice services, how do your own eco device. It's uh, really interesting. Definitely it's worth to some kind of workshop. We don't have time for that. Uh, since then, we probably, on the next presentation, they would be also good to tell about notification. They are not ready for general audience, but they will be probably for the period of time. And thank you for the attendance to the presentation, and I hope after it you will find your good nugget in the world of the voice assistant. Thank you very much and waiting for questions. <laughs> <laughs>